In this video, we're gonna build this rock solid subfloor with treated two by sixes, half by four inch wedge anchors, joist hangers, hot dip galvanized nails, steel L brackets, composite shims, and polyurethane glue for zero deflection. We got a lot of work to do, let's get it done. Hey gang, it's Paul with Studpack. Welcome back to the channel. In our previous video, we told you that Jordan and I were gonna start framing that bathroom floor today, and that's exactly what we're gonna do, and we're super excited about that. Now, yesterday when we ordered the lumber, our lumber yard told us we're on the PM delivery schedule. They'll be here in the afternoon, and that worked great for us. We're all set up, the gate's open, and they can drive all the way back. But check it out. Here's our lumber right here by the front gate. My phone was ringing at 7 a.m. Said, hey Studpack, we got your wood all loaded up. We appreciate it, but they had to put it right here because the gate was shut. So you know what we gotta do, Jordan? What's that? We gotta tote all that to the back. You ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, we set up our laser, and according to the laser, this is the high point in the slab by 5 eighths of an inch, which is pretty crazy over this small area. So since this is the high spot, what we're gonna do, the two by six ledger is gonna sit on the slab here, and then it'll run level all the way across. And again, we're gonna use our laser to get it level. If you don't have a laser, you need to get one, or just get an old spirit level, right, Jordan? So here's the game plan. We have the length of our ledger right here, 106 and three quarter. So we're gonna cut both ledgers, lay them on the floor, lay out our joist hangers, and attach the joist hangers first, then attach them to the wall. That way, we can just lay in our joist. Let's get going. <laughs> All right, we've got our two ledgers cut and laid out on the floor near the plumbing. That's because our framing depends on where the plumbing in the floor is. So check this out. Our framing is gonna end right here at this beam. And we made a corresponding mark on the wall behind Jordan. And we're gonna cap it all with a piece right here. So we popped the line an inch and a half back from our beam and that represents the ends of our ledgers. That's how we got the length for our ledgers. Now that they're on the ground, we can lay out for our joist hangers. I wanna go 12 inches on center for a few reasons, and that works out great for us. And it only costs us a couple of extra two by sixes. I think my friend Steve's probably worth an extra two by six, huh? And the layout works great, check it out. One foot, two foot. So I'll have one on either side of this fitting, and these are about nine feet long, so it works out great. So let's lay out for our joist hangers, attach them to the ledgers, and then we're finally ready to attach the ledgers to the walls. All right, our joist hangers are in and we're ready to attach our ledgers to the concrete curb on this side. We've got our laser set up on our brute laser stand and it's giving us a perfectly level line on this wall to reference from. Remember, this is the high spot of our floor on our slab and the distance between the top of our ledger and that laser line is 25 and a half inches. We found a piece of wood, 25 and a half inches. So we're gonna set it on there and it's gonna just kiss the laser line here, of course, because that's our reference. But then check it out, what happens down here? We're gonna put it on our ledger and we're about a quarter inch low. So all we gotta do is lift the ledger until the top of this board is at our laser line and attach it to the wall. We're using half inch wedge anchors, let's get going.
All right, that ledger is in, and that went really quickly because the bolt location didn't matter because we have a solid concrete curb to bolt our ledger to. On this other side, we have cinder block or cement block, and they are hollow, and we know that. Number one, we can see it's hollow right here. Number two, we actually drilled a hole right there, and it's hollow. Sometimes these are filled, especially on the West Coast, for all your seismic requirements. So then we drilled a hole in the mortar, but the mortar is only about that thick. That's kind of what we expected. So the money shot is that hole right there. That is solid block all the way back. Perfect for our anchor. So we're going to lean our ledger against the wall, transfer this location onto our ledger so that all of our bolts line up about three quarters of an inch from the edge of a block. Let's move our ledger over there, mark it, drill it, and install that one. Then we can fly. All right, our two ledges are in. That was very easy. They're perfectly level with each other. Our next step, is we're gonna cut our two end pieces right here. They're gonna nail into the end of the ledger. Then we'll cut our eight joist, drill the holes for the sewer, and slide them in. Let's get going, bud, I'm ready. All right, we got our first ledger on. We are using hot dip galvanized nails throughout this process when we're nailing into the treated. We didn't put our end cap on, our end ledger, because remember, we're gonna frame and plumb at the same time. So if this board were here, we would not be able to push our pipe through all the holes we're about to drill in the framing. So let's head outside and show you how we're going to drill all the holes in these joists and at the same time accommodating the quarter inch of slope per foot we need for our drain. Check it out. We have a brand new Milwaukee Big Hog hole saw and I forgot my mandrels at home so we had to go get a new mandrel but that's fine because my pilot bit was dull anyway. So I'm so excited about that because the last time I had to drill a big hole I used my old hole saws which are dull. That thing touched my arm and this was two weeks ago and look how that burn is already healed. X marks the spot. So then the next one is going to be a quarter inch higher. And the next one will be a quarter inch higher. And that's going to give us our slope for our pipe. <laughs> so on, look at that. It's not pretty, but it's rough framing, right? Right. Check that out. I wouldn't be even a quarter inch deep with my old one. Nice. Good job, Milwaukee. So if Jordan cut it right, it should slide right in. Oh, it'll slide in. Yeah, somebody left their speed square in the way. <laughs> yeah, we just need a little persuasion. Let me grab it. Just like I planned it, dude. Money. How we, how we look right here. And if our plan worked, that should go through there into the fitting. I'm in. Nice, bud. Whew, time for a water break. <laughs> it is the next day and our goal today is to finish the framing and the plumbing and the electrical so tomorrow we can get in here and throw down the plywood on the top. Now remember how we drill these holes. Each one of them is a quarter inch higher than the one in the previous joist so it automatically establishes our quarter inch per foot of slope for our pipe because our joists are a foot apart. Let me put this level on here and Jordan you get a shot of that and you can see We've got nice slope on that. Perfect, man. But before we can lay out any more joists, I think it's time to glue in this piece of pipe because now everything's gonna start to get in our way. This one's already cut to length. I'm gonna show you how I did that here in just a minute, but it's ready to go and so is the double Y. Let's put all that together and start laying our last few joists. All right, we're all glued up down there. Now let's get glued up right here and we can continue framing. Now we're gonna have a three inch 90 rolling up into this wall right here. This is four inches right here. Too big for a two by four wall. So we're gonna frame up a two by six wall behind our toilet and our urinal. Now we're gonna have a ledger right here. Let this board represent the ledger. So a two by six wall is gonna end up right there. It's going to be tiled. So I just gave myself an inch to this mark for drywall, backer board, the tile, whatever we're going to use. So if that's my finished wall, a 12 inch rough toilet from the finished wall, that's the center of my drain. So we've got our Y here. We've got this toilet L. We're just going to go hub to hub with a short piece of pipe. And that's going to put us right at this mark. And how far are we off the wall? Let's check it out. 
This is as far as I can go. I can't move this fitting any more that direction. Let's see what we got, Jordan. All right, I'm gonna like at 22 and a quarter. So you figure four inches for the wall. I've got 18 inches between the center of the toilet and that wall, which is perfect. It's just what I want. So let's glue on the Y, glue on the toilet L, and then we'll figure out how we're gonna frame the rest of this. All right, guys, we're all glued up. And while we're in here, we even insulated the copper water lines. Now, I really don't have a sense of how cold it gets in this building, but we thought for a few dollars worth of materials, it was worth throwing some insulation there just to prevent a freeze. Down here in Louisiana, we get a light freeze every year and a hard freeze about every, what, five years? But he's good to go. Now, we were kind of concerned. Oh, we were kind of concerned about this pipe plug. We put in this old cast iron, but check it out. The pipe is actually sitting on top of the wing nut, like a little support just the way we planned it with a perfect pitch. Now we're ready to continue framing. We were gonna put a joist right here, but then we realized we got to notch it around here. We could roll it under here and put the joist hangers on after the fact, but we decided why don't we just run the framing this way? It'd be a lot easier and it really isn't gonna matter in this case. So that's what we're gonna do. But before we start framing, we thought, let's finish the electric. I gotta cut these back and sweep these up with some EMT. And I didn't want all that framing around here working in between, it's kind of a pain. So let's show you how we're gonna tackle this electric. Now we're gonna sweep these up with EMT into our new exterior wall using the same fitting that we took off during demo. This is half inch rigid, which is this, by half inch EMT, which is this. I've already got it marked right here where I wanna cut it. I've already got my EMT bent We'll show you how we did that on this side, and I've got it marked where I want to cut it. But this cut isn't so square right here, because remember, we did that during demo, so I need to square that up. Now, back in the day when we used to cut rigid with wires inside, we would do it with a hacksaw, and we would make a cut and not go all the way through. And you'd very slowly do that all the way around. And then you would just snap off that piece and clean it up with a file. I could do that today, but I figured, let's go one better. I actually have this little piece of extension rod from a chandelier that we just hung in a remodel we finished. So I'm just gonna sleeve it. I'm gonna put the two wires inside, just like that. Boom. Now my wires are totally protected and I can go after it with my little hacksaw. Still gonna be careful. I'm gonna cut this one. Then I'm gonna cut the EMT. We'll get this one bent where it goes. Then we'll do this side. There we go. All right, let's pull this off. Now I got a nice square cut. Let me grab a file and I'll clean that up. Just gonna very carefully take the burr off of the inside, being extremely mindful of where the wires are. But they're actually just gonna wrap around the back side of the file and they won't get damaged. But it's important to remove that little burr. Why? It could cut the wires. I want it really smooth. Perfect. All right, let's do this other side. All right, we're gonna put a little 90 degree bend in the end of our EMT. EMT is thin wall conduit, electrical metallic tubing. This is an EMT bender. It's a lot different animal than the hickey. The red handle bender is for half inch EMT, and this hickey that we showed you in a previous video is for half inch rigid or IMC. I'm just gonna line up the end of the conduit right there. Your foot goes here, you're pushing down with your foot and you're pulling with the handle. You'll make a nice bend. Pushing down with your foot keeps it on the ground and I have to over bend it a little bit past 90. I'm gonna show you why when we get back over there. All right, I'm liking that. Awesome, that came out great, son, don't you think? Yeah. Looks awesome. So now we can continue with the framing. We got our ledger right here. It's gonna go on the end of these and then we can fill in this with blocking. But like I said earlier, we think we changed our plan. So let's put the ledger on and then we'll show you why we changed our plan. All right, the ledger's in. Those 16D hot dip galvanized nails are super strong. Now let us show you why we changed our framing. You can even see we removed the joist hangers that we originally put on before we attached the ledger to the wall because we changed our plan, right? I can't put a joist here where I wanted one because this Y is in the way there would be nothing left in the middle, right? It'd be just a big hole. And if I put one right here where we had next planned it, of course I have the pipe in the way, but now I have the conduits in the way. So big notch there, big notch here, we'd have to roll it into place. So I think what would be better for us is just simply to change direction and run them this way. And put one here, one right on the other side, 
16 inches on center all the way across. So let's measure for those. Now we always measure at the end. I'm gonna show you why, check it out. If I measure here in the middle, I am at 33 and 3 eighths. Let's go to the side, 33 and 7 eighths. That's because one of these boards has a big bow in it. But if we cut all our blocks to 33 and 7 eighths, it's gonna push that bow out and it's gonna be perfectly straight. Let's count how many we need. I'll get you set up on the saw and I'll get the gun ready. Always good to have a little practice on the hammer, right? <laughs> Hoping that's all it needs. All right, gang, that is it for our two by sixes. Now, yes, I know we changed direction on our framing here. We're gonna run the plywood subfloor perpendicular to these guys, which means it's gonna be parallel with these, but it's gonna be fine. It's a short distance and we have one and one eighth inch thick subfloor. So it's gonna be just fine right here under the toilet and where this wall is. Now you will notice we added some blocking right here between these joists that are on 12 inch centers. We did that for a couple of reasons. If I don't have the blocking and I'm standing on this one, it's gonna wobble side to side and it's gonna flex up and down. But now that it's tied together with this one and this one, it can't move left or right. And the load is shared by these two. So it is much stronger. And we simply pop a line down the middle and stagger them just like you see there. Now this floor is very strong and rigid, but we're gonna make it even better. So make sure you stay tuned. You won't wanna miss what we're gonna to do to this floor to make it absolutely solid. But before we make this floor even stronger and anchor it to the slab, we have to nail off all the joist hangers. Now we already did that side, but we have this side left to do. I usually use my palm nailer, but it bit the dust today. It's not working anymore. I think the diaphragm inside is ruptured and I don't have a positive placement tool. So Jordan timed me hand nailing one of the hangers. It took 40 seconds. So we have what, 12 of these, 48 nails. Like I said, we've already done that half. Let's go old school, grab the hammers and get this side fastened. Right here. Yep. All the hangers are nailed and with two guys and two hammers, that went pretty quick. Now we hand nailed it with 16D hot dip galvanized nails. Now when I went to the lumber yard, I asked for a box of galvanized nails for my framing gun for everything else. And the nails they gave me were little babies. They weren't holding at all. So I'm gonna return those and that's why we hand nailed everything with those 16Ds. Before we can lay the subfloor down, we have two major threats that are a potential killer for this floor system. Bogey number one, we basically destroyed any structural integrity in these two by sixes by drilling this big old hole for our sewer line. And bogey number two, we're floating above the slab. Now these two by sixes are pretty dry. They were stored in the shed and they've been outside for a few weeks in this 100 degree weather. But I do expect that they're gonna shrink a little bit. And by that, I mean maybe an eighth of an inch. So they're gonna do one of two things. They're gonna shrink down and pull the plywood subfloor with it. And we're tiling it, we don't want that to happen or they could come up. And I don't want that to happen because it's gonna make this gap even bigger between the slab and the wood. So here's our plan. 
we got a bunch of composite shims and some polyurethane adhesive and some brackets. We're gonna pack between the two by six and the slab here and here on both sides of the pipe with those shims and we're gonna glue them in place so they'll never move. We'll have a set here, roughly one third from the wall and a set here, one third from the wall. So we're breaking this nine foot span into three three foot spans. So that'll keep the whole floor from going down. Now to prevent the whole floor from going up, what if these shrink and they want to break the bond on our glue on our shims? Well, we're going to fasten these to the floor with some L brackets. So let's get everything we need and finish this floor and we're ready to put down the plywood. Alright, that is super strong now. Every step we do makes this stronger and stronger. We have one more step. Come down here and we'll show you what we're going to do. Now because we weakened the 2x6 right here, we found these really cool composite shims. It says wood, but it's just like a piece of Trex lumber. That'll never rot. And you can see I already have two here opposing each other. We're simply going to put some Loctite PL3 on the shims and slide them in. That way they'll never move. We're going to do a Pair here, whatever it takes. One, two, three, four shims. The same here. So each side of the joist on the pipe is covered and supported. And then we're gonna do another one right over here. And that is it for the floor system. Then we can do what we've all been waiting for, right, Jordan? Right. Oh yeah. It's moving, yeah. Pretty bouncy. Yep. All right. All right. Cool, man. Let's get going. This won't take any time at all. There we go. But still, I can't push it anymore, right? My hands are going to be covered. It's all right. Cool, man. All the shims are in, and this thing is absolutely rock solid with zero deflection. We got the brackets holding it down and the shims holding it up. And speaking of holding things up, check it out over here. We made these little pitch blocks under the pipe to guarantee our slope towards that double Y we installed. We simply glued them to the concrete so they'll never move. We are super fired up about this floor and I am so glad it is finished. Our next step is gonna be the sub floor. One and one eighth inch thick plywood, super thick. Once we put that on there, we're gonna basically build a mini version of this floor right here in the shower, except it's gonna be two by fours, and that gives us a guaranteed curbless shower. That's gonna be super epic to make, and I can't wait to show you that. So we're gonna wrap it up right here, gang. Thank you so much for all the support on the videos. Smash that like button for us, but don't use your positive placement tool or a palm nailer. Use a hammer just like we did. Leave us some of your awesome tips and tricks. Subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see you on the very next Stud Pack video.